Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, June 18, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is a Howard Tracer Chair of the Newbury Zoning Board of Appeals. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Elaine Baker? Yes. Eric Spahn? Yes. Larry Murphy? Okay. Larry must not be with us. Uh, Mario Caravelli? Yes. John DiMartino? Hold on, I gotta unmute him again. Yes. You can stay unmuted, John, unless okay. you have noise in the background. No, I don't think so. Okay. <clears throat> okay, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Susan Noyes? Yes. Okay, anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. I don't think so, we have any additionals for tonight. Okay. Uh, good evening. Today is June 18th, 2020, and this open meeting of the Newbury Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth through the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement for open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed or encouraged to per participate remotely. The order in which you can find the order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such particip participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Newbury Zoning Board of Appeals is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the ZBA agenda which can be found on the Zoning Board of Appeals page on the town's website. The agenda identifies how the public may join the meeting. This agenda can also be accessed from the website's homepage by clicking on the box that says Agendas at the top of the news box. Please note that this meeting is and that most attendees are, <coughs> excuse me, are participating by video conference or by telephone. Um, we were provided, were, meeting materials were provided to the board committee members prior to the meeting for review. We now turn into the first item on the agenda. Uh, before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. For any discussion items, I, the chair, will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called further. Everyone other than board members, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please use earbuds with tablets and cell phones. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Be aware that other participants can see you if you are participating by video. To see you, take care not to screen share your computer or introduce other distractions unless you're requested to do so by me. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. State your name before speaking. Board members will be called upon in first name alphabetical order to ease the process. If board members wish to engage in call, I can never say this word, call, call, yeah, come on, help me here. Call it with, thank you. <laughs> with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourselves. Finally, each vote taken is in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. 
So now we'll move on to the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, Eric, do you want to read the first one, which will be Ron Boland's application? Ron Boland. Ron Boland, 354th Street. The applicant is requesting a finding from relief from Section 97-4D of the Newbury Zoning Bylaw. As the proposed construction will increase the height, floor area ratio, FAR, and lot coverage of the structure located within the Plum Island Overlay District, PIOD, for the property located at 354th Street, Plum Island, Newbury, Mass, 01950. Assessor's map, U04-0-61. Okay, Eric. Um, before you start, the reason why we called on Alan first is an abutter showed up at the town offices. So I'm in the process of trying to get them connected. So um, if you could hold on one second, let me just unmute them. See if they can. Otherwise, I'm going to call. Uh, hold on one second, I'm sorry. I'm texting with her too, so. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Um, Okay, thank you. Okay, now can you hear the voice though? Do I hang up here? Do I hang up the phone? Then the phone is gone. Oh. Okay, hello? Can you hear us? We can hear you, I believe. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you, Susan. Yeah, bye now. Um, okay, so Mr. Vollen is going to present his application now, okay? Okay. Okay, Mr. Vollen, you can uh, tell us what you'd like to do. Okay, um, I am looking to do uh, an addition to my existing house that will be a single floor um, addition that would be towards the, uh, the west side of the property and it would incorporate a bedroom, a bathroom, and a additional like living space, study, living room, whatever. Um, and it would be attached to the main um, existing house by a hallway. Um, the addition is, I think it's 484 square feet. And then the hallway itself is uh, 12 times six, so it's 72 square feet. Um, and then that would be the additional um, uh, floor area, I guess. Uh, and it would be a single floor addition. Uh, I'm going to uh, start with you if you have any questions uh, for the applicant. 
Hold on. Is that me? Yeah. Yes, Elaine. Yep. We're going to go in oh, alphabetical yeah. order. Oh, okay. we're going to look at the plans right now. I have no questions right at the minute. Okay. Um, Eric, do you have anything to ask the applicant? Uh, sure. In the in the package, we see the existing two story residence, but we don't have any floor plans that show the existing existing rooms or bedrooms of the existing residents. Oh, I see. Um, um, yeah, okay. I can send that to you quite easily. And then the second, the floor plans, I mean, the site plan's a little small, so the setbacks um, are not listed on the application. The proposed setbacks are not listed on the application, and they're also not listed on the zoning table on the pl site plan. There, I have the setbacks, I believe, listed. There is a page in the application um, that has proposed lot, and then there are setbacks listed for the front side A, side B, and rear. And so for the proposed uh, changes, I have the front setback at 41 and a half feet, side A at 13 feet, side B at 12 and a half feet, and then the rear is 5.6 uh, feet which is actually the rear of the existing structure, not the rear of the addition. Okay. The addition itself would be, I believe it's maybe 12 feet from the rear of the property. I have to double check that. I understand, it's just that the application wasn't, is not, you have that under existing lot, and, but there is no, yeah. nothing was filled in under the proposed lot numbers. It's possible that you have the application from my, um, I don't, I don't know actually, but that may have been from April, but when I've sent the application material in for this meeting, it had all those proposed setbacks. Okay, I'll open that. Um, that in the, in the, is there an attic or a loft in the, in the space? Is one side two stories and the other side? Exactly, so um, there would be, over the bedroom and bathroom, there would be an attic space and then over the other living area would be cathedral ceiling. Yeah. So effectively, uh, 22 by 11 is that bedroom bathroom area, and it would be covered, uh, above it would be a, a uh, attic space. No further questions at this time, Howie. Okay, just, uh, when I looked at the plans, uh, I don't know if there's any other on the plan. Uh, no, did that, or am I missing it? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I'm sorry, I had a little trouble hearing that. So looking at the plans, I don't see any elevation. The elevations are on the um, existing condition survey. Oh, you're asking the elevations for um, for the new structure? Right. It is, and I have it again on that same um, document for the proposed lot. Um, the height would be 22 feet, one inch, with the mean height at 22 feet, seven inches. Right, it doesn't show it on the plans though. It shows it on the application. Yep. So that, that's just something that's normally on plans is showing the elevation. So, uh, you have a lot of noise in the background. It could be me. It's possible to me. Okay. If you could ask them, it's kind of interrupting. Sorry. I just found it very distracting. Right. I didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> well, it took me a while to figure it out because I've been unmuting and muting, so... Hey, Howard, uh, this is Mario. Uh, just in the original document I got sent, there was an attic that was 99 square feet. Uh, in the new one that was just sent by Susan, there is no attic on that uh, far checklist. Okay. Uh, Mr. Volan, did you hear the question? Hold on. I did, yes. Um, the issue with the attic was that it was actually um, going to have a dormer installed in it. But because of the issues of making that dormer space then um, 
I don't know, potentially square footage or living space, we decided to eliminate that from the plan. So I had added that 99 square feet because of the fact that there was a dormer there, but I removed it. Uh, anything else, Mario? Uh, no, th that's it. Okay. So the total is 1656 without the attic? That sounds correct. Okay. okay uh, John, do you have any questions at this time? So do we have no, John? No questions us? from me. No questions from John at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, how do we take uh, public participation now, Sue? Well, um, I would say if there's anybody who has a question with regard to this application, if they could use the raise hand function, which um, you can access by um, clicking on the participant toolbar on the bottom, and then over on the right, you should see a raise hand function. I know the Nashes have questions, so what I'm going to do, yep, she's raising her hand, so I'm going to um unmute her there you go oh, let, wait can you hear me we can we oh can. great sorry about the um i don't know how to switch over so you can see our face i'm going to have my husband speak up jeremiah about the questions the questions as, as regards the, the attic our our house in the back is a very low house and there are, there's a bedroom and a, and a kitchen in the bathroom and if the, uh, the 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 building is too high in the back, it's going to make our, the back of our building, which is a very small, 700 square feet, it's going to make it very dark. It's going to shut off all the light, the daylight. It all depends how far from the the, the from the the, the 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 property line. How far back does it go from the property line? I believe That's the addition. House. Yeah. Our our house is so close to, to my neighbor's house and they have all kinds of trouble, right? With the, 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 the division, the noise, the heat, and the windows open, they have to, they usually have to use a, a screen porch where they don't have to, to, to make it more private. And it's, in other words, it's gonna... it, it is what it is, but it was built too close for the, number one. And it, we intend to live in this building and retire, retire yeah. next year. And for us to see a tall building, I'm a builder myself, to see a tall, a tall building on the back it's going to destroy is, is going to cluster the backyard and it's also close, darken the back of our house, which doesn't, which doesn't uh, face the sun, the daylight. And the building in the back is going to close it off. It's going to be dark the, all day, day and night. Okay. And with the with, with the attic, let's hope there's no attic whatsoever over the, our, our house because if there's an attic there, right, it's a total nonsense. Okay. They got loads of room. They got a big lot there. They can always move. It. I can't see why they, they can't move that all the way to the other street and on, the, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an angle, it would, it would be a better building for them. Everything is better by doing such thing besides going along the back of my building with a the, with the, with the building. It makes so much sense for both parties, actually. Okay. So Mr. Nash, this is uh, the chairman. I, I uh, understand some of uh, what your uh, questions are. I think the first part of your discussion was referring to somebody else's house. Am I correct? Yeah, okay. yeah this, this is for example. For example, I mean, it's none of my business. You know what I'm saying? I'm just giving an example. Okay. okay. It is yeah. what it is. It's got, it, it is what it is when they were both built. They're just, you know, you know the back that clustered together, you know? The, the, the right. neighbor directly right next to us has the exact style house as us, the exact same on the street. And right. because, um, the man behind us who, who is just land now because of um her house being directly behind her for privacy she had to put up like a 16 foot uh fence i'm not fence um 
what do you call it, canopy, and uh, block it off for the noise coming from the house and in the privacy. And and we plan on retiring here, and now this is going to ruin our whole retirement if, because we're too old now, we're in our 70s, to bother uh, with, with behind us. We can't put up a canopy. We're too old to do that. Right. And it's going to ruin everything for us, where they have a lot of frontage land, the man behind us. And like my husband said, if they could go out, work around going that way. Okay. And, so and uh, number one thing, I can visualize when they build this building in the back, in the addition onto the, the, their existing, right? It's okay. going to look so terrible from the street here, in, in, even in between the houses, to see this building. Okay. And for us to be right in the back of it, right? It's, it's going to be like a dungeon, 24 okay. hours a day, summertime. I, I, under, I understand uh, what your concerns are. It's a little bit hard for me to visualize exactly what you're talking about. Um, but... Well, see, our house is very low. It's very, it's very low on the, our, on the windows in our house, in the bedroom, and that, right? If there's a building in the back, right? We're in, we're in darkness. It's darkness. Okay. Wintertime is going to be dark. Summertime. Summertime is dark. The sun shines. The sun shines on the opposite side. You know what I mean? The naughty, the northeast. Yeah. Whereas then the. Do you have any other points to make? Or is that your, your Well, my, my, my question: How close? How close is it? How close is that building? If it's going to be five feet off there, the, the, if okay. it's going to be five feet off. Okay. Well, our, let me. Our, our, our line. We'll see if we can find out and tell you. Mr. Mr. Vaughan, are you able to share? Can I? Can do you have a site plan that we could bring? You could bring up on the screen. Just a minute. Let me see if I can do that. I can. I can authorize you to share your screen. The site plan, meaning like the existing condition survey. Yeah. Give me just would, a minute. You would probably place some of your butters on there. And, and could I say one more thing? They said they're adding 1,400 square feet. That's bigger than our house that we have in Newton that we're going to be moving from up to here. That's a so huge the, house. The, and if they put an attic, uh, that's going Nash, to make Mrs. Nash, just wait your turn until Mr. Volan can find uh, okay. what he has, okay. and then you can redirect the question through me. You find Thank something, you. I can open it up to you, Mr. Volan. I'm sorry, just give me a minute. Okay. I'm looking for the, uh, the version like of it. That's running low. Ugh. All right, this is, not, this is not the exact version I'm looking for. Um, addition, maybe this will be all right. Let's pull this up. It won't have good, good um, resolution, but let me pull it up. Give it a try. Okay, maybe this will help a little bit at least. Um, how do I share my screen? Well, I just gave you um, the access to do so. so Let me do, if you just one second. Let me bottom. see if I can find it. Yeah, hold on. I'm sorry. Okay, let me try to plug this in, Jerry. Your screen here it is. Okay, I think I have it. Nice. All right. So and. Is this is this is the um, the existing conditions? Can you see it all right? Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. All right. So this is the existing house where my um, arrow is here. This is the existing structure, right? Okay. The Nash's property is here. This is what he's um, referring to in terms of his proximity to the neighbors on either side. Our house, the 5.6 feet, is this distance here. This is the addition we're proposing. It would come out here, and then the edge of the addition would be here, but it's well over the 10 feet, which is the minimum uh, setback from the rear of the property. I can't tell you the exact distance, but I believe it's 12 feet, but I can, I can check on that, obviously, and it can be measured by the scale here. Um, and uh, like I said, it's a single story addition it's not a 1,400 square foot addition. Um, it would be a 484 plus the hallway, which is uh, 72. So I think it's about 560 square feet would be the additional space, just to clarify that. 
and the height is dictated by you know the requirement that we raise the structure at least 24 inches above the existing ground and so that's how the the height of it all ended up coming to be but at 22 feet i believe again it's well within the requirements for height it is it is uh, and I, I think that uh, in the beginning um, eric was speaking about your application and as far as the setbacks are not maybe on the application and it also doesn't show on your plan here and that's i think what he was referring to earlier. okay i hear you so having those specific setbacks i can see them i think but i you're asking for them to be clearer right yeah uh, okay, okay. Uh, howard i have a copy that has the setbacks in them okay well can you tell us what they are sure for the proposed lot for the front it's 11.5 side a is 13 Side B is 12.5 and the rear is 5.6. Okay, so Mr. Volan, which, which side is, is towards the Nashes? This is the, uh, the rear is towards the Nashes, but the 5.6 reflects the distance from the existing house to right. the back of the property. Understand that. So we still don't know what the setback is really exactly from the new addition. Yeah, but I honestly, I could figure it out very easily just by taking a, a scale measurement, I can tell you. I understand. Okay, so uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nash, do you understand that the... Uh, uh, <coughs> we lost that. ...other than what you thought it was, and it's not right on the line? <coughs> well, it's... it's is it going to be an attic that it's going to be... So it's they're adding like a, like a ranch style. And then you have the attic, right? So is the attic going to be like a, a blocking everything from us and making us like in a cave that we can't retire here? Uh, well, it's it's hard to answer. I think the proposed height is approximately is it twenty point seven or twenty? It's twenty two foot 22. one inch. Right. Or I'm sorry, with the mean height because I think it has to do with the variation of ground okay. level. Right. I think it's 22 foot seven inch. It is. Okay, so so the height, is, the mean height is 22.7. Uh, the zoning bylaw allows 35 feet, so it's well below what is allowed. So it's not necessarily an unreasonable height. So, Hallie, if I may add that the per the per the application, the elevation and the ridge of the new addition is equal to approximately <coughs> just about the same as the existing building. Okay. That's the problem. Yeah. That's that problem. Let me, let me ask you a question. I, I haven't seen them, the, the drawing right now. How far from the existing building is, how far out does the extension go? Uh, Mr. Bolin, um, answer yep. that? So if there's, yep. So from starting from my, existing um you know my kitchen jerry where my kitchen is and that little uh, entry the stairwell that comes off there's a deck there there's a 12 foot yeah. hallway that goes towards the west right and then at the end of that 12 foot hallway there will be a box that is 22 foot square so that's that, that's 32 feet from your house from your the main main house um, from the main house, it would be 22, the, the edge of it would be 22 feet plus 12. So that's so that means, that means that means that it goes further, goes further west than, the, than my house. That covers, that, that's terrible. That means, Jerry, that, means that, that, all, that means that all the back of my house is all covered by, covered from, from a, a building that goes up 20 feet. So we're totally closed off right at, at a 20 at a 20 foot building in the back, whereas the back of our building is only nine feet, 12 feet. You know what I mean? It's a, it's like a wall. How many windows are gonna be in it? Okay, uh, uh, do you have any other questions, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nash? Well, no, well, the, the, no, no, the question, right? But if anything, I'm not gonna allow this, right? For a box in the back like this. 
especially when the sun shines on the other side. It's different if the house is faced a different way. It all depends when the house is built or these things are built, right? It all depends when the sun rises and, and, and it goes down. Right. You, you so therefore, want... right, so therefore, right, in the best of times, I've tapped before, besides, besides depending on the sun rising on the, on the northeast side, right, whatever, right, and, and going down on the west. Okay. Uh, do you it's not, I, I, if any day at all, I'm, I'm not going to allow none of it because he's got loads of, pro he's got a loads of property, right? His design should be facing his, the, the other side of the street, which is 54th Street. 54th Street. He can go along the side, and right? And he's got loads of property, and he's going to have a better building. Mr. Nash, I think we, we hear your concerns, and yeah. they're very good concerns. And there is concerns about overbuilding on the island. Now, if an applicant, and if you were an applicant, and you submitted a proposal to build something on your property that met all the requirements, then you are allowed to build it. We understand your, your concern and concept. Um, I, there is, you know, some, there is no zoning bylaw about sun or, or wind or shading another piece of property, unfortunately, in our town at the moment. Um, but I would say that if your house is on 52nd Street, is that true? Yes. Yes. Then you are to the south of the applicant's house. And being to the south, that means from through the winter, through most of the summer, your house is more likely to cast a shadow on um, Mr. Boland's property than he is to cast a shadow on yours. No, I don't agree with that. This is right. Patricia Nash. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I'll tell you why, because ours is a little tiny little ranch, right? And it's, um, not it's not even a ranch. It's 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 a tiny little house. Lower. It's lower than uh, where his is. So uh, it, when he builds there, they go. It's like we're living in Boston now. It's like we're on top of each other now. It, it, you know. I, 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 I we hear your concerns, and and I think in stating that if somebody presents a plan that meets the setbacks and meets the requirements of the zoning that then that they can build it by right. You may not like what they're doing, but if you can find something that they're not meeting in terms of the requirements, then you, you, you know, you can certainly present that. Um, and, you know, I, I do think we all know Plum Island and we all know the conditions and the variations. Um, and the fact that there is an overlay district means that not all the properties are laid out or most of the island is not laid out per typical zoning. So here we are. Yeah, see, I'm just a, 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 afraid. I know from the house right next to me, um, it, it's nothing but a problem with their, their house is directly behind the house right next to me, a uh, number four. That was exactly yeah. it, and, and they had to put up, because all they see is their windows, their noise and everything. They had to put up like a 12 foot canopy every summer. And but we can't do that. We're, he's 70 something and I'm almost 70. And, and we just want to know if he would reconsider his plans where he has so much land in the front to work around some of that so it's not in our face. Okay, so Mr. and Mrs. Nash, this is uh, the chairman again. Uh, we understand your concerns and uh, I will certainly ask Mr. Volan if he has any possibilities of doing that. But we, uh, if you don't have a different question or a different concern, uh, we're gonna move on. We understand what your concerns are and we thank you for your input. So Mr. Volan, are you with me? Yeah, I, I am with you. Okay. Did you ever, is there any way to uh, change what you're doing. I understand that it's all within, you know, what it's supposed to be, but I'm just going to ask you, uh, because your neighbor's concerns, I assume you considered all possibilities. We did. We went yeah. through uh, as many different options as we could. There was a point at which we had considered doing uh, an expansion towards the front of the property, but there was no way we could get the flow within the house to work properly within the limited footprint that we would have available. 
So I'm, a, I'm answering that to say that we did consider that option and that was actually where we had started, but it, it really could not work for us in terms of being able to create reasonable traffic flow with our staircase moving out towards the front of the house and our kitchen is on that side of the house and being able to create a space that would be more proximal to the kitchen made much more sense in terms of the design of the house. Um, so that's where when we discussed with our architect and we just we've been planning this for uh, well over a year right. that was how we ended up migrating towards the design that we we've presented. Okay thank you. Uh, so do we have anybody else that would like to speak? Sue? She's muted. Ali, I have one more item to bring up. Yeah, no, I, I did too. I just wanted to find out if anybody um, else had anything. Okay, we'll move on, Eric, to you, uh, your question or point. So this is this addition is to serve as a master bedroom, is it not? Yep. Um, and the thought of the configuration has a uniqueness to it, which would lend itself to be a secondary apartment if um, in just in the way you're laying it out. It's not intended for that purpose. It, but it has every ability to have someone come into uh, a common corridor and then enter the existing house and then go in and enter this house and be a rental property or, or a separate unit, which is not allowed. Okay. Yeah, we are not planning to rent it. I know you're not planning to rent it, but then you sell it and then the next person has, doesn't plan to rent it until, it, until you rent it. Um, and so there is something, Howie, that's that in terms of looking at the floor plan seems, um, you know, it seems interesting in terms of having the space and understanding that it fits on the, on the lot in terms of the setbacks, it meets the height. But um, in terms of having the front door and how it's placed with the hallway and having separate entrances into these two, two right. structures um, is precarious. And I don't simply see that adding a door or taking away a door solves this problem this time. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that point, Eric. So just in general with the application, uh, I don't know if I don't have the right, the the most current uh, plans, but do we, does anybody or do we have a floor plan for the existing property? I have it. Um, okay. If you don't, I have it and I can certainly submit it. Okay, you, that's uh, Mr. Volan speaking? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, did you want me to pull it up on my screen? I well, can do that. It may well, no, no, no. Well, you, yeah, it might be helpful, but um, because because we don't have that, you're going to have to submit it so everybody can see it, and it will okay. need to be part of your application, as well as uh, you know Eric's points about the application, the setbacks back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to have everything on file. Okay. And, and uh, I really hadn't given any thought to what Eric said as far as, uh, you know, being possible rental unit, but I did question uh, without seeing the existing plans, uh, you easily could have more than three bedrooms the way uh, this new addition is, uh, set up so that's another thing to consider uh, anytime you have a room that's uh, a closed door like say for instance your your study or whatever you call the living space in the uh, addition mm -hmm. it could be another bedroom so uh, you know on Plum Island you're only allowed maximum three uh, this is Sue call me hang on just a sec please Hi, right, so completely locked up. Okay. So I gave you and, uh, you and Eric proposed ability. So I'm going to try and move around and fumble with this a little bit, but um, I can't hear anything that's going on. Okay. 
Um, I'm not sure where you left off. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, so. Okay, so uh, the uh, abutters spoke uh, as far as their concerns, and now we're just talking about some of our concerns. Okay. Uh, so do you want to just listen on the phone while you're yeah, trying? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call into the other number, but it just my ability to unmute people has disappeared right at the moment. Okay. So perhaps you and Eric can unmute the applicants until I'm able to figure out what's going on, if they will speak him or any of us. Okay. Eric, could you hear Sue? Yes, I can. Okay. That's up to you okay. to unmute people because I have no clue. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to go uh, back. You can hang up. I'm going to call into the other number. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Elaine, uh, you got any thoughts about what we're discussing at this point? Yeah, I can't hear Elaine. Elaine, you're muted. Yep. Got to unmute. I think Susan has to unmute her. Yeah, I, Susan has the key. Oh, there's Susan back again. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, now we can. Okay. I think that this should be continued to our next meeting. There's a lot of unanswered questions. Okay. Yeah, I don't disagree. Before uh, we um, before we continue it. Can I make questions. sure that I understand what those questions are? I, I would yeah, be we'll, very... We'll get to Mr. Bowen, just a question, and uh, we'll, we'll give you a round. So uh, do you have any concerns other than what we put, Elaine? Um, no, my only concern, well, I, I need to see better drawings than what I have. I mean, it's so hard. I know I it's agree. hard mailing, and I know it's... But these are so little. Right. Okay. I agree with you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Eric, uh, your concerns are we've already talked about, but we'll get back to them. I just want to move on to Mario if he has any questions or concerns about what we're talking about. Uh, no. The only thing I had mentioned was the attic. Uh, it's not in the uh, updated application. So if it is in there, we should put it in. If not, we should not include it. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And John? Uh, can, can I just clarify? Um, just there is an attic space. Does yeah. it need to be included as far as floor, floor space? Ms. Mr. Volan, just wait for a second. Please. Okay. Yep. I, I need to kind of do this in order. Uh, I used to uh, doing it through a Zoom meeting. So, uh, John, do you have any uh questions or uh, concerns that we haven't brought up must be muted yeah he's muted okay no okay well eric yeah i so saw, sorry i wasn't able to unmute it wouldn't oh. let me no concerns <clears throat> okay thank you from me okay eric yes all right um uh, i think uh, the consensus probably is is that we need to uh, uh get a better application and in plans yeah. uh, you have a list of things you've been writing down yes so so the uh, Colin, are you listening i am okay here we go go ahead so Eric. susan's updated email recently this week has the updated application in it with the minimum uh, lot setbacks listed in there. There is an adjustment to the proposed um, FAR in terms of the calculation. And so the, the attic or loft space with the dormer was taken off. And so that is in the current application. So. Okay. Mr. Bowen, what I think we're looking, what we are looking for is a site plan that lists all the setbacks to all edges of all edges of the building. Yep. 
We're looking for existing floor plans of the building so that we can prove out the number of bedrooms that you have and the number of bedrooms that you're adding and that they don't exceed the total of. We do have a, a bigger discussion about a detached apartment uh, or an attached apartment in the particular arrangement that you have, um, which you may have to go back and seek some counsel from the building um, inspector in terms of that. And then just clarification so that we can see that the attic is or isn't in there because it's not it's not clear between the applications that we have and that fish may be more of a video thing that we have, but that's those there are five things that we're looking for. Okay. Can I just uh, clarify with the floor area, is the attic considered floor area space? I had pulled it off because I did not believe it was in the category of floor area. If, if it's enclosed space and you have a roof, you have a hatch that you, or a pull down ladder to right. access an attic, it's an attic space. If it right. has a railing and it's open to the space, to the two story space, even if it's unfinished, it's still a loft. Okay. So um, if it looks like it and smells like it, it is. So I think we're just looking to confirm a little, a better understanding from the drawings of what it really is. Okay. okay. Um, so are you with us now? So we're still not with us. Looks like she's muted. There you go. Yeah. I am here for the moment. Okay. Excellent. So um, I'd like uh, to know if anybody wants to make a motion to continue to our next meet. Well, to a to a meeting next month. Uh, uh, date to be determined. So can we have a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to continue the applica application to the next hearing. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, so I need to call a roll call on the vote. Uh, Wayne Baker? Yes. Eric Svein? Yes. And I uh, will vote yes also. Uh, motion passes. So, uh, Sue, yeah, uh, you want to try to come up with the date now or after the meeting? Um, well, it's probably easier with the applicants present. So, okay. Um, if we defer to our regular meeting date, that would be July sixteenth. Okay. Uh, does anyone on the board have a problem with that date? No. 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 Okay, it's fine with me. So, uh, Mr. Bolin, uh, yep. will be the next meeting is July 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are you be available to come? Or, uh, yes. Again, I don't know. I should be available. Okay, so you're clear on uh, what we'd like you to bring back and you're clear on the date? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh oh, hold on a minute, Howie. It's Elaine. Just yep. so you're gonna get us this information and the updates and everything prior to this meeting so that we can review them? Okay. Correct, yep. All right. Yep, just send them to me, Mr. Vollen, and I'll make sure that everybody from the board gets them. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bolin. Thank, thank you, Mr. Bolin. Thank you. Thank you. So, Eric, we're gonna move to uh, the next, uh, the next thank step. You, Okay, the next, hear next public hearing is Helen and Brian Bowie of 16 Plum Island Boulevard. Continued hearing, the applicant is requesting a finding for relief from section 97-4D of the New Newbury Zoning Bylaws as the proposed construction will increase both the height and the coverage for the property lot located within the Plum Island Overlay District, the IOD, on assessor's map U02-0-124. Okay, Mr. Uh, are you there? You are. 
Yes, yeah, both Helen, Helen, both Helen and myself are here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we last saw you quite a while ago. Maybe you want to yeah. review uh, for everybody why you're back here. Um, well, basically, we were just waiting for, uh, I believe it was a clarification on uh, the roof access. Um, pretty much everything was uh, settled out, so we believe. Uh, we didn't get our order of conditions with the Conservation Commission. Uh, everyone was in full agreement with that. And it was our understanding that uh, there was a clarification being requested by your board, the town council, as to whether or not a roof access, like uh, being accessed by the stairs or a landing would be considered an additional story. So uh, we believe we have everything in place and it's just that uh, one item that we, you know, we're waiting for your response on that. Okay. So, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, town council's opinion was that it was a landing, not a story. Is that your understanding, members of the board? Elaine? Yes. Yeah, Eric? Yes. And Mario and John? Uh, I don't know if you were on. No, we that. weren't. Don't know. Okay. And Eric, uh, somewhere along the line, months ago, you were going to verify the plans they resubmitted. Did you? Yes, you and that? I had a note that there was additional information provided on the Monday of the hearing, and so we had to continue it that night because we just didn't have enough time to review it by the time we received it um, before the hearing. Right. So uh, you were able to verify the changes that were made. Yeah, it's been a while, so. Uh, I understand. And I have one other note. Um, yeah, I think that uh, from my notes, uh, they had to update the application. Yeah. And uh, make sure all the values on the application corresponded to the plans. And uh, I think to verify the height, because that was very close. And then the clarification on the roof access, which uh, I guess the, the town council took care of. So, uh, Was there any, uh, Mr. Bouye, is there any update? Were you gonna look at the roof form at all? I have a note that says that, I'm not. Um, well, basically, uh, the plans that were submitted and were discussed at our last meeting, um, they were revised 12, 31, 19. And those are the plans uh, that, you know, we're working with now and would like to do. Um, you know, there's nothing really special. It's really just a uh, rooftop access. We will have a portion of it to be a deck. Yeah, understood. I just have some notes that, that talked about a, a, a tweaking or a revision or possibly removing one of the windows on the side of the stair so that there was a little less window uh, per the neighbor's concern. Sure, this is Brian. You were speaking. Um, what it was, uh, the neighbor was mistaken with respect to the location of the stairwell. Uh, she thought it was on her property side. However, it's on the uh, front right corner, which is adjacent to the liquor store. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh, Wayne, you have any <coughs> questions or concerns now? No, with the I just I just had some notes, check new application, check revised zoning, and check roof deck issue, which we just discussed. So those were my only issues on this one. All right. And uh, Mario, uh, 
I don't know if you've even looked at this because this came before you came on the board, but do you have any questions or concerns? No, I don't. Okay, John, same question for you. Yeah, nothing from me, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we're good as far as uh, the access is going to be considered a landing, not a story. Uh, the revised application is correct, I believe. That's yeah, the one thing I don't have in front of me now. Is... Okay, so what was the date on that application, Mr. Brewer? Brian. Oh, this, this is Brian Dewar speaking. Um, it was revised and so indicated in the upper right hand corner, 12 31, 2019. Right. Okay. So let me just make sure I'm looking at the right one. I actually uh, can't read the stamp on mine application. Eric or Elaine, can you read the stamp on the application uh, you have? Well, I have 1031.19 revised 1231.19. But the only issue I have in my notes is the existing lot. It says lot coverage, they have 14.8. It was supposed to be revised to 13.8. And the revised application has 14.4. Am I correct in this, Eric? Well, I can't answer that. I don't. I don't have the updated. For some reason, I have all the drawings. I have multi sets of drawings, but I don't have the application for some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh... Are there any issues other than the updated application that we have? I'd, I'd like to move move this along if we can. Yep. If everything else is good, we can uh, con conditionally, if we if we decide to uh, vote in favor, we can conditionally do that with a correct application, which we probably have, but. Uh, none of us can seem to find right now. So is is that uh, sound reasonable, Eric? Sure. Okay, so you're good. You know, uh, for all the other questions, Elaine. Yeah. Sound reasonable? Yes. Okay, so uh, maybe Eric, we could entertain a motion from you, uh, conditionally doing this with a updated application that we all know is updated. Okay, so I'll make a, a motion uh, to grant the finding uh, from section 97-4D in the Newbury Zoning Bylaws as the proposed uh, construction um, will increase uh, both the height and the coverage for the lot and property um, that the proposed project is in keeping with the um, uh, is is within keeping with the plumb uh, PIOD, and upon the condition that a um, that the current application gets circulated amongst the board members, of which we could just confirm that the information is correct on it. Um, okay. Uh, can we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor, oh, no. uh, roll call vote, Elaine Baker? Yes. Eric Spine? Yes. Eric Tracer, yes. Uh, motion passes. Okay, so you understand, Brian? He looks like he's frozen, can you hear me? Um, no, um, you know, Helen, Helen and I you know, appreciate all the time and effort 
uh, you know, board members put in and also Susan. We very much appreciate it. And uh, we will review the application and get that to Susan, you know, right away. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, the next public hearing. Uh, B to B2W LLC, care of Mark Griffin, Esquire, one Plumbush Downs, Plum Island, continued hearing. The applicant is requesting a finding for relief from section 97-4D of the Newbury Zoning Bylaws as the proposed construction will increase both the height and coverage of the structure for the lot property located within the Plum Island Overlay District, PIOD, on Accessors Map, R51-0-015. Hey, good evening, Mark. Uh, tell us what you have. Okay. Are you speaking for, Matthew, are you speaking for Mark? Uh, no, Mark should be speaking for himself, but I think he's, it looks like he's muted from what I can see on my phone. Right, he's trying um, to okay. speak. What? Oh, there he is. Okay. He disappeared for a minute. There we go. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Mark. Okay. Um, I know it's been a long time, but I hope you can remember that we first came before you uh, on February 20th. Um, and we presented our entire plan at that time. Uh, and we had some small uh, de minimis changes uh, to our plans, which were submitted that night at the hearing. Um, and the board was uh, unfortunately unwilling to accept uh, a decision conditioned on the submission of those plans and the updating of the application at that time. Um, we expected to be on in March after we had submitted those updated plans and amended application. Uh, however, as you all know, uh, in March, uh, the town of Newbury stopped having meetings uh, until just now. So uh, just as a sort of um, reprise of what happened, uh, I'll go through just a little bit of uh, the original presentation. So this is a um, one-story uh, cottage. Uh, it's in the uh, residential agricultural zone. It's also in the PIOD. Um, and it's located in the Plum Bush Downs uh, condominium uh, complex. This is a very unique uh, complex. It's right before the Plum Island Bridge. Uh, this house is unit one in that complex. It's the first house on the left before you go over the Plum Island Bridge. Uh, it's in very poor condition. Uh, it's been battered by uh, floodwaters. Uh, and you know, it's actually quite surprising that uh, the building hasn't been washed away at this point. So one thing that's unique about the Plumbush Downs complex is that um, all of these uh, are standalone houses, which are also condominium units. Um, they sit on a 27.9 acre parcel, um, and there are 11 of these houses on that parcel. And so when you're considering one of the condominium units on the parcel, what you're doing is actually applying the numbers associated with the entire 27.9 acres. So when you're figuring out floor to area ratio for this unit, unit one, you're applying the lot area which is 27.9 acres. So you wind up with some very small numbers. So regardless of the um, proposal, the change to this unit and any other units on the Plumbush Downs uh, complex is likely to have very small changes to Florida area ratio and lot coverage. And this one is no exception. So in this particular instance, the petitioner proposes to reconstruct a single family home, the uh, one story cottage, which is built on grade. Um, since this proposal will be larger, will it be an expanded footprint, will also be taller than what exists now, uh, the PIOD requires the petitioner to apply for a finding. Um, and so uh, the petitioner has done so. Um, the new home will be constructed on pilings since it is in the floodplain. It's going to increase from one story to two stories in height, which is allowed in the PIOD. Um, it will also increase from two bedrooms to three bedrooms, which again is allowed in the PIOD. That is the limit. Um, the increase in square footage is approximately 1,006 square feet. Uh, however, as I explained before, this is a very negligible 
uh, impact on the dimensional percentage, you know, with respect to FAR, the proposed uh, FAR will only be 0.01%. Um, percent. So uh, very tiny and way under the 25% um, requirement or uh, maximum. Uh, lock coverage is, is no different. Um, the lock coverage will remain at 0.7% due to the negligible change in building code. Again, far below the 20% maximum. Uh, parking is in the uh, driveway, which will be uh, pervious uh, and has sufficient square footage for two cars. Um, the building is again raised on pilings for flood proofing purposes. The current building is on grade and is not flood proof. Uh, the front setback from the Plum Island Turnpike is pre existing non conforming at 16.6. Um, so the change from the uh, original plan which was necessitated by the Conservation Commission, uh, required pulling that original proposal back a little bit. So um, the pre-existing non-conforming setback at 16.6 .6 was going to be held. However, now it's actually gonna be pulled back and made better. So we will actually have a 18.2 foot front setback um, from Plum Island Turnpike. Uh, so that was the actual major change uh, from the resubmitted plan uh, which was supposed to be in front of you in March. Um, the other uh, setbacks uh, do not change, and those actually are measured from um, the other units because of the neat configuration of the Plum Bush condominium. One of the things the board had asked us to do was to submit the overall site plan for the Plum Bush Downs condominium uh, to show those other setbacks, even though they have nothing to do with the expansion of this unit. And so we did submit that. You should have it in your packages. And what you see on that plan is that the uh, westerly, the rear setback is 411 feet shown on the condominium site plan uh, measured from another different unit. Um, and the easterly side, side setback is actually 920 feet. Uh, again, measured from a different unit, and the westerly setback is, is actually 13, point, point, 13 feet, again, measured from another unit. So um, we have submitted the condominium site plan and updated the application with those uh, setbacks on it. So you have all of the um, current information uh, with respect to that. Uh, we also had one other um, plan change that we had to submit. Uh, and we did so, and actually that was as a result of a mistake. Uh, we had submitted elevation drawings showing the proposed building, uh, and the architect had measured uh, the mean grade incorrectly uh, at 32 feet. So the, the current uh, building is at 15 feet uh, mean height, and the original proposed plan showed 32 feet mean height. Um, that is now up, updated to show an accurate mean height uh, measured from mean grade uh, at 33.38 feet. Again, um, within the 35 foot maximum in the PIOD. So, um, you know, none of these updates uh, have created any new nonconformities or exacerbated any existing ones. And in fact, the only existing nonconformity that is um, relevant uh, was actually, you know, made better by virtue of uh, moving the building away from Plum Island Turnpike and increasing that front setback. Um, so, with respect to the criteria for the permit, um, the proposed use is what exists, and that is the single family residential use. Uh, this is a by right use in the you know, residential agricultural district uh, and in the PIOD. Um, and again, where the building is taller uh, and the footprint is slightly different, um, the PIOD does require that the zoning board um, make a finding uh, that the proposed structure is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and the PIOD uh, than what exists. Um, and so, you know, we would submit that, uh, first of all, the building that's there right now is in very poor condition. Um, and the building that's proposed uh, is obviously going to be uh, modern and much more aesthetically pleasing uh, and premium construction. And so, but, but further, um, this building is going to be uh, built according to flood standards. Uh, and in relevant part, the purpose of the PIOD is to reduce flood damage to public and private property resulting from 
flood waters uh, to ensure public safety by reducing threats to life and personal injury to eliminate costs associated with response and cleanup of flooding conditions. And so far from being substantially more detrimental to the PIOD, um, this proposal fits squarely within the purpose of the PIOD in that we are actually uh, creating a building that's going to um, you know, fit within that purpose and be flood proof and not uh, cause damage in accordance with uh, you know, uh, flood conditions. Uh, so for all those reasons, we respectfully request that the uh, Southern Board of Appeals grant uh, the petitioner's uh, application for a finding. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you, Mark. Um, Elaine, do you have any questions or concerns? Uh, I think she has to unmute herself. Okay. Unmute. Okay. There we go. Elaine, do you have any questions or concerns? Um, my issue is I don't have the revised updated plans, so I can't ask any questions. Okay. Uh, Eric, same questions for you. Concerns, questions, and do you have a plan? An updated plan? I believe I have the updated uh, site plan. Okay. Uh, those, were, those were submitted on February 25th. Yeah. No, I don't have any. I think we've been over the questions of, of, um, of Plumbus Downs. Okay. Uh, so do we have any public comment for this hearing? Um, I'm just going to say if there's anybody on the phone that has a, a question that they just need to press star nine and that will raise your hand. Otherwise, if there's any other video participants, you just need to go to the toolbar on the bottom and raise your hand if you have a question. And I'm not seeing anything show up, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, if we have no other questions, do we want to make a motion at this time or more discussion, Eric and Elaine? Actually, no. wait, wait, excuse me, I didn't ask Mario if he had any comments on this. Uh, but sorry about that. Uh, getting used to a new routine here. <laughs> no comments, thank you. Okay, John. No comments from me, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, Eric, back to you. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion uh, to grant the finding for relief from 97-4D as the proposed construction meets the requirements of the PIOD and is not more substantially detrimental uh, to the existing neighborhood. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, no. Elaine? Yes. Okay, Eric? Yes. Okay, I vote yes also. Uh, motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman you. and board members. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Okay, you ready, Howie? Yep, go right ahead, Eric. I can read it. Uh, public hearing uh, number four, Stephen and Lori Scipioni, 4, 4th Street, Plum Island. The applicant is requesting a finding for relief from section 97-4D of the Newberry Zoning Bylaw, as the proposed construction will increase both the height and the lot coverage of the structure located within the Plum Island Overlay District, the IOD, of the property located at Accessors Map U02-0-215. Okay, uh, are the applicants with us? They are. Yeah. Okay, uh, would you like to tell us what you'd like to do? Hi, good evening. I know it's late. Uh, yes, so we own a, a small cottage uh, at 4-4th Street, as um, you had said, the address. And what we'd like to do is um, 
enlarge it by 327 square feet. We're staying within the existing footprint. Um, our application was denied on the basis of percentage of lot coverage and height, although we're not changing lot coverage. Our lot coverage is staying exactly the same. Um, and our height is uh, going from 21 feet, 10 inches to 24 feet, five inches. Currently, the home has two really small bedrooms on the second floor with a wall that you can't stand up in. So it leans slanted. I sent pictures. I tried to put together a very detailed package for all of the members to um, view you know, what I'm talking about. But uh, there's extensive mold damage up there. Um, it's still sustaining some water damage. So we wanna do, um, part of what we wanna do is adding that third bedroom. Mold, uh, mold remediation and really make the home livable for myself uh, and my family and our daughter. We, we want to move in there. Um, so that's what we're asking for. Okay. Uh, so uh, when you uh, said that you're not increasing the lot coverage, just the height, you are increasing the FAR though, uh, which yes. maybe the building inspector didn't specify that, but you're increasing that by quite a bit, which uh, uh, you're at 26.6 and now you're, uh, you would like to increase it to 33.6. Yes, when I spoken to Sam Jocelyn, when we were working through this in the beginning, um, and we were talking about the um, livability of the space, he, he didn't seem to think that that would be a problem. He said we were already slightly over the 25, that it really was just a variance. And because we were staying uh, in line with the conditions of Plum Island and not increasing the actual footprint of the home, that um, it, it really, um, he didn't feel should be uh, a problem. And what we're really trying to do is just make make it livable as it stands right now with the damage that's on the second floor and the wall coming in and if did you guys get the pictures by chance i could share my screen if you don't have the pictures i have pictures okay so you can see um you know just from those photos that just how that we have one small the the street side wall is straight the back side wall is slanted so you can't yeah the roof so you can't stand up on half of the upstairs so it really is um not a you know it's really almost not very livable for us right now okay um, elaine do you have any questions for the applicant or concerns with the application not right now, I don't. Okay. Still Eric? looking at everything. Okay, Eric, do you have, you have any comments? Uh, no, it was just the FAR, understanding of the FAR. Okay. And Mario, any comments or questions? Yeah, I guess my concern is similar to the FAR. It's actually a 25, over 25% increase in the FAR as it currently is. And uh, was there a, a new roof deck going to be in there too? Or is yeah, the roof deck is actually part of the second floor. So it's cutting it. We're not putting it on top of the roof. And we had, we had sort of, we had got, walked through this with Sam as well. Um, and what we're doing is it's being cut into the second floor. So it's not going on top of the roof. It's, it's part of that second floor. So it'll be covered. Does that was that included not, in the FAR? It's not going to be covered. Well, there's there's two roof decks, is there not? There's a low one and a higher one. Yes, and and the one that's existing now is not covered. The one that will go on when we no no I'm sorry it's just going to be the same deck right we're just raising no there there'll, there'll be two I'm sorry I'm sorry. there'll be two roof decks both are not covered one's the lower sitting on yes, top yes that's of the, right the I was thinking of down in the yard we don't have a deck in the yard and the other right? one's cut into the new roof that's what she's trying to say <clears throat> okay neither one covered right okay uh, John anything from you no no questions from me okay. Uh, I, 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 I think that, you know, you're really asking for a modest change, but uh, unfortunately the FAR increase 
I know Sam might have told you he didn't think it'd be a problem and Sam isn't with the town anymore, but sometimes it's better that the building inspectors don't tell you things like that because unfortunately it is a problem and I don't know how we're going to get around it. Uh, well, we're, oh, we're, we're at the 26, so if we were already above the 25, isn't it just a matter of a variance? Since we're not going, no, don't it's don't use the word variance. You don't <laughs> you don't want to go down the variance path. Yeah, variance. You can't. It's impossible for you to get a variance for something like that. So what you're you're looking for really the uh, easiest form of relief, which is a finding. Uh, but you're asking for an awful lot. Uh, let me just ask if there's any. Uh, people in the public that would like to speak to this application. So do we have anybody? Um, hold on, we have um, Gerard Witten. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Okay. Gerard Witten. Okay. And I am a uh, direct abutter for the applicants. I live at uh, 15 Northern Boulevard, which is directly to the east. So um, I've been a resident uh, down here for 22 years. And um, the applicants purchased this property, I'd say maybe within the past six to eight months. Um, it's now being used as a rental property and it is available um, for rent through the vrbo.com website. So I, I think that's important to mention because um, in a general sense, I'm actually in support of this project with one exception. And that's the, uh, the upper roof deck. The proposed upper roof deck actually um, is proposed to start at the same 21 uh, foot height that the current roof uh, peaks out at. And the reason this is of concern is because as a vacation property or as a vacation rental, uh, folks who are down here are here to have fun. Um, I'm here to live, this is my full-time residence. And so I wake up in the morning at six to go to work. Folks who are here vacationing um, are gonna be apt to be hanging out on that roof deck. And so that's of concern to me because I do see that as being more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, in general, the, the other uh, proposed additions, that's something that the board can consider. Certainly the house um, is attractive, but if there's water damage, that's something that I can understand the applicant wanting to address. So my main concern is focused on the roof deck. And I would suggest that either, um, if the board can put a stipulation that maybe the roof deck uh, ceases operation after 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. or um, that the roof deck would be, the upper roof deck would be removed from the proposal. Um, if either of those conditions were in place, I would be uh, in support of the proposal. Um, and I think the other important aspect to mention here is that roof deck would be uh, about 22 feet from my bedroom window. And so again, thinking about this as um, a vacation rental versus a full-time residence, I would ask the applicant if they had somebody who was constructing uh, a deck 22 feet from their bedroom window, I think they would be thinking twice about that as well. So I would ask the board to consider that aspect of the proposal um, with regard to the being more detrimental to the neighborhood aspect. I have no other concerns about the uh, proposed uh, construction though. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody thank you. else? Let me just, um, if anybody else is here that has a question, if you could just press star nine or your raise hand function in your could video. I, um, could I speak to, to um, I think I'll it was Jared, chance, right? Was that his name? A chance to speak in just a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I am not seeing anybody um, raising their hand, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, uh, Laurel, you can uh, respond to uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Witten. You have the like. floor again, Laurel. Oh, hi. All right. Well, nice to meet you, the neighbor that um, popped in. Well, our intent is to make this our residence. So that, that's why we want to make these changes. And yes, right now we do have some renters in there. But our intent is if this gets passed, that this fall we're gonna do this renovation and we're gonna be moving into this home. Um, and if you look at the pictures that I sent in, and I could share my screen, I have them up right now, 
our home is so teeny. I mean, we, we actually went out there a couple of days ago and took some more pictures and we, and we took an, some aerial photo as well. I mean, we're very, very small. We're actually sitting in, an, in, in a hole of the homes that are around us. We, the home behind us actually is huge. I feel like it's two times the height of our home, the one to our left, and then the A-frame to our right, you know, looks right down into our home as well. So we're very, very tiny. So when he mentions that, you know, our, our, um, our roof deck, which isn't even going to be a roof deck, it's going to be, a, you know, the, the level of the second height is looking in someone's bedroom window. I, I'm not quite sure which bedroom because we're really, really teeny, the house is. So if you want to bring that photo up, I did give, uh, you know, give the ability to share that, Lorelei. Yeah, sure. I am going to um, share my screen right now. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Desktop, maybe? Um, here, I'm trying to... Put it on the bottom of the screen. There should be a green. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me, let me, um, I just have that photo up, right? Do they have that in the package? Oh, would like to record. Um, you could see um, it in the, in the package. No, but I got it. I have to try and share my screen. How Down do on the do bottom, Laura Lee. Yes, I'm there. I'm just getting, oh, share, mate. Wait, share? Allow Zoom to share. Okay, open system preferences. I'm sorry. I think my computer is asking me to change some things here. Oh, wait, did I? Zoom, yes. <gasps> Zoom, yes, will not record the contents okay. later. I might, I might not be able to. Okay. I'm not sure that I can get this up here, but I, I do think that you have the picture that um, it has a red arrow. It's in your packets. Yeah, we, we are like by far the, oh my the, goodness. the, the yeah. smallest house on the street. <laughs> We're a little tiny house between an A-frame and a colossal house behind us. Yeah. We're in a trough of homes. So as far as um, a deck infringing on the neighbors, it's, I don't see it. Really if if anything, I mean, look at the decks that are all around us, right? I mean, yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, if you look, I, it, I did enclose it in the packet. It's a, it's a paper that has two pictures on it and there's two red arrows that are looking, you know, pointing down at the picture. And you could see our home in comparison to all of the homes around us. Sure. Oh, sorry about that. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. You're, uh, you're also adding a den and study over 100 square feet too. Is that correct? Um, the entire square footage that we're adding is 327 in total. Right. It, on the application, it has den, study, office, 103 square feet. There's an open space, and that's what our architect called it, between the bedrooms. There's, so there's going to be three. There's two teeny bedrooms now. There's going to be three small bedrooms, and there's a small open City. space that she called a den. Yes. It's not really a den, though. It's it's just, she just a, labeled that for the planning. It's just a sitting space between the hallways that goes. Yeah. If we just didn't know what to do with that open space. So we're going to put a chair in it. <laughs> 10 by 10 chair. Yeah, yeah, where where are you, which plan are you looking at that says den? I have uh, on, on the far checklist, page four, den study office as existing square footage zero, and that has proposed square footage 103. Right. That would have been our architect that filled that out. But on the plan. She does have a floor plan. Yeah, where did she, where, where did she put that? There's a, the room in front of the master bedroom. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's what she's calling. Yeah, oh, she just doesn't have it labeled on here. Yeah, we just, we, just so, it, it, so the, we have access to the deck. It's, we couldn't expand the master bedroom through that. Otherwise, you have to walk through the master yeah. to get to the deck. So yeah, we just, have to actually shrink it. It's almost like just a, a, a fat hole to get to the deck door. Because she had to work. Yeah, because our architect is working within the constraints of the existing floor plan. We're not expanding out past that first floor at all. Um, we're just taking that second floor and moving 
taking two walls, the front wall and the side wall, the street yeah. wall and the side wall out to the existing frame already so we can have space on the second floor that we could actually live in. Yeah, the, the, the two- and, do, and then do the mold rem remediation as well. Because there's some- So really, from my point of view, the only stumbling block in your application is increasing the FAR by such a large percentage. Uh, Elaine, uh, comments? That's a big, big percentage. Right. I know, I know probably to you it's a small amount because it's only 327 feet, and this really is not a large project by any means, we understand. But... Uh, we are limited by what the zoning bylaws say. Eric, any anything from you? Any way to figure this out? Because um, yeah, we really do. I mean, like I said, you know, we we want to make this our home. So right. when we when we purchase it, or even before we purchase it, we try to do all of our due diligence to. Um, again, like I said, unfortunately your current building inspector's not with you, but he came to the home. We worked with him before we even made an offer to try and see if, can we make this a home that our family could live in? And that's really what we're just trying to do. Um, no, we, uh, we understand, or I understand for sure. Were you gonna say something, Eric? Um, well, I'm gonna, from the photos and the size of the house and the fact that it's not expanding the footprint, uh, is a favorable item. The fact that it is, you know, you have a lot and when you buy a house, you buy the lot and the lot allows you certain limits of size as it does everybody else that buys their lot. Um, and unfortunately, Plum Island has some very small lots, which makes it difficult. Um, you know, your house isn't sitting on the neighbor's house, neighbor's lot, which has happened in the past and seems fairly well positioned, but the bigger houses around you have bigger lots in which um, they work with. You know, that said, there are two houses across the street that have double tiered decks um, that, that are quite large for the proportion of the house. But if they sit on a bigger lot, then they can do that by right. So I'm not so, so much opposed to the idea, but that you are over the, FAR limit and to be in keeping with the neighborhood. I'm not sure that we've I've, I've totally come to terms with that. Your neighbor does have a point about a roof deck that, that adds more, even more space to the house. Um, and I'm not, you know, you can compare everybody else's, but at the end of the day, it's, it's your lot size and the regulations that allow you certain sizes on that lot for the lot size. So um, I don't know how, I, I mean, if, if it's in keeping with the neighborhood and it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood, it can be um, viewed because, you know, all the, the finding is for a non-conforming lot that is made more conforming to the neighborhood is usually the premise by which we, we go by. I understand and this, like I've said, it's a very modest proposal. Uh, and uh, even with the FAR being enlarged by the 327 feet, it's a much smaller uh, footprint in the area than any place else in the area. So I, I do even understand. when we worked with our architect, we were, um, you know, trying to be very environmentally conscious of the constraints of the home that we had. Like I said, I, you know, we talked with Sam, had him come out a couple of times, uh, talked to actually have talked to a couple of neighbors who felt that it would be an improvement. Um, and, you know, so we really have tried to do our due diligence in trying not to overbuild. We don't want to do that. Like I said, we're a teeny little house sitting really in the middle of huge houses that are around us, double decks, triple deck across the street from us. So we didn't want to come before you and ask for too much. We, like I said, we really are just trying to make this livable. We, we want to move in there. We want to live there. But as it is right now, our family can't live there. Right. 
I mean, would you consider taking off the roof deck, the high roof deck? Yeah, I mean, we could go back to our architect and look at that. I, I mean, that for us was just going to be something that we as a family were going to enjoy, and, and it was still going to sit much, much lower than any of the homes around us. Understand, and, and whether the home is a rental or whether the home is lived in is really um, is kind of a non-factor because you could certainly sell it within a year and it could change hands and someone else could have other ideas. So uh, although I appreciate your you know, you're moving to the island and wanting to live there and be a good resident um, certainly has great merit to it. It's not, it's not an overwhelming factor in terms of, um, of, of, of getting additional FAR for the lot. Um, you know, I guess it, you know, the neighbor has valid concerns, Howie, and there is an FAR issue, but I don't think it's overly outreaching in terms of what's being proposed. Right, right. I think that might be a, a good compromise, a little give and take, that uh, where you are increasing the FAR, maybe as small as that deck may seem to you, it, uh, we'll keep the foot, kind of the, the total footprint, I'm not talking about what's on the ground, but of the property uh, smaller and maybe uh, that's what one way this could work. Uh, Wayne, what do you think about that? We have to do that. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And Mario, you want to comment? Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, I kind of like that, you know, the additional FAR for, you know, not doing the additional deck. I, I think it's a good give and take. Yeah. John? We, we would do that. Yeah, I would say that seems like a reasonable compromise to me. So do you think that's reasonable, uh, Laura? Yeah, I, yeah I, I was just talking to my husband, and, and I, yeah, yes, that's definitely reasonable. I mean, you know, for us, that was just something that we were going to enjoy when we lived there, but it's more important for us to have the inside of the space remediated, and, you know, that's where we're sleeping, so. Well, I think this is one way we can make it happen. Okay. So. Uh, do we have a uh, motion? Mm -hmm. Proposal. Sure. I'll grant the motion to grant the finding to relief from 97-4D. Mr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt, but did yes. Mr. Dr Mr. Witten wanted to um, ask another question? Oh, okay. Mr. Witten, uh, go right ahead. Good evening again. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say I appreciate the compromise, and um, if the applicants are willing to do that, um, I'd be in support of their project, and I would welcome them when they get down here, and maybe we can build that second or third deck together. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Eric, go right ahead. Okay, I will uh, grant the motion for a finding from 97-4D uh, for the proposed construction with one condition to be mentioned. Um, that the proposed construction is not more detrimental than the existing neighborhood, that all of the conditions but the FAR um, are, are met or are not exacerbated in terms of the proposed construction. And the one condition is that a revised submitted plan showing the removal of the upper deck on the roof be submitted. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we're going to vote. Uh, Wayne? Yes. Eric? Yes. I vote yes. Motion passes. Um, does that change also affect the um, calculations on the application? No, it shouldn't. Okay. Does it work? It's not nope. FAR. Just wanted to make sure there was nothing else that needed to be updated. Can I ask you just a quick question on that? Do I, um, what, so at this point then, do I just have my architect resubmit plans? Do, do we need to do this again? Go through the, the appeals no. board? No, okay. I just need to submit the, new, the plans that this take is, the This off. is a conditional motion that you take the second floor deck off. Got you, okay. If you pass that in, then uh, everything will proceed. Got you. Okay, perfect. That's all we need to know. Okay. So, good luck with it. Get the information Thank you. to uh, Sue, and then uh, you'll be able to get your permit after the process of waiting for appeals. 
Ah, okay. That would be the next question then, how to do that. So, okay. She'll, she'll explain it. I'll that with you, Laura Lee. Okay, great. Susan, thank you for helping me with my application in the first place. No problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're all set then. All thank right. you. Okay, so yeah. uh, do we have any other new business? I think the only thing we wanted to talk about was the Village of Cricket Lane. Right. Okay. Yep. That's what I think too. Okay. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a voting member. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So I'll make a couple of comments uh, to start us off. Uh, not knowing where the lawyer stands because I never met him other than the one day he moved in. Uh, it appears that the civil engineer has not learned anything from the last application because they never got anything done on time. And again, they don't have anything done on time. So I'm not very happy about that. Uh, but regarding Eric's email, uh, there are, I guess there's a lot of other things to discuss other than the civil engineering and environmental stuff. So I'm not opposed to going on with the meeting next week uh, and let him present and uh, ask questions. Eric? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, last time was a little bit of a learning curve and um, we were beholden because there were so many site issues and there were so many things to correct and there were so many changes upon changes that the whole focus was that. And I think there's a lot of other focus in terms of just general issues, um, we should be able to, to um, convey our first thoughts. Um, they submitted the application. They actually need to make a presentation to us first. Um, we then make our comments and, and questions to them. We can make sure that there's an understanding of what has been submitted to the applicant. Uh, and we can make it clear that we will not uh, be, be beholden or delayed by uh, inefficient um, revisions. So I think we should proceed, even if it is um, a shorter meeting, but I do think we need a presentation and I do think we need the first sort of question and answer and sort of understanding of what this applicant intends to do. This isn't just an extension of the last project, and it isn't. No, and I didn't mean that at all. No, no. I, I, yeah, I'm not. It's, it's the same engineer, and uh, seems like he's going about it the same way as he did the last time. Co correct. And we never, for for your other guys on the board, um, we never did get to the full essence of reviewing the application. It was so heavily focused on site and civil. Um, and that's where it bogged down until it stopped. So Mario, uh, are you agreeable that we should meet next week and uh, at least fill out as much information as we can get? Mario's not on. Yeah, he dropped off. Oh. Well, but John's maybe. here. <laughs> okay, well, John, yeah, I'm just going in my alphabetical order. Okay, John, so what do you think? I just, so I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? I wasn't real clear on what the question was. Okay, so uh, there was a question today. We, we have a meeting scheduled for next Thursday uh -huh. for the Cricket Lane application for the 40B project. Mm -hmm. They have never uh, got in touch with our peer reviewers, mm -hmm. consultants, in the two months that has preceded this. Uh, so the lawyer was apologetic, uh, wanted to uh, continue, but uh, Eric and I would like to have the meeting. Uh, there's many other things other than just the civil and environmental parts of the project that need to be looked at and asked. We've had a lot of public comment. Uh, there's a lot of questions that they need to answer. So. What I'm asking you is, do you agree that we should continue uh, the meeting? Well, we should not continue it. We should hold the meeting next week. It was a long way around getting it to a question, but 
Do you understand what I'm asking now? Uh, I think I do. I mean, uh, naturally, that seems reasonable to me. And naturally, I would default to uh, to whatever you guys recommend. What is the yeah. best practice? Okay. Right. Thank you. So, uh, Mario was in agreement too. <laughs> I got my audio back and everything. Okay, you're back on, huh? Yep. Can I um, weigh in on something? Yeah, go yep. ahead. Um, I know I'm not a voting member, but I'm kind of the one that has to do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Sure. Um, I just think we need to be very clear to the applicant as to what we expect from them. Um, and also, so for the purposes of the abutters, um, that we are just hearing the applicant and the zoning board themselves is going to ask questions at this particular session. It's not that we're, we're not allowing them public input, but for this session, it's just a presentation. Um, because I think if we're not clear with it, there's going to be a lot of um, perception about um, comment period, what's been done. There's, you know, peer reviewers has, you know, stuff has taken place. Where are we at? What are we reviewing? What are they presenting? I just want to make sure we don't get stuck in that back right. and forth period. I understand that. So what you're suggesting is no public comment uh, or input in this. Or just say it's purely a presentation by the applicant and an opportunity for the ZBA to ask questions. Right. And, okay. and that the public should then send in any comments having heard the presentation. Now is the time to get your comments in. Well, some of them already have. And I, I, already I know, but it's you're making the announcement to them. So now you're setting the rules for everybody to say, mm -hmm. look, get your comments in. We need, we need to get them in so that we can relay them so that they can be answered. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be better if you got them in now because at a certain point, um, you know, this isn't just a, a rolling period. We need your comments so that we can understand them and convey them and get an answer and, and move forward here. You know, uh, just one other comment. Uh, I happened to be on the planning board meeting last night and they had a whole host of issues with this uh, project. So I don't know how you guys... Uh, you know, communicate between different boards, but yeah, they know. sent us to they sent that to me today, Mario. Okay, right. Um, okay, so I thought we, I saw that. Yeah, I think I did share it with the board. Um, and a couple of the comments that they oh, we lost somebody. Um, a couple of comments that they made um, in the beginning with regard to the ownership um, aspect, etc. Right, right. Apparently, um, their lawyer has gotten back to us already and said he would have the new. Um, information to us by next week. So it sounds like they have taken care of that piece, although we don't have the physical evidence yet. Um, so I guess that's to be seen and seeing if they deliver on it. And if they don't, yeah, I'm not sure we want to hear them. You know, uh, just one other question too. Uh, when they make the presentation, will they be able to address all the other concerns that were listed previous to these meetings? I'm going to let Eric answer that. What are you referring to? I think they have to make the presentation first. Then we have to convey to them that we have some, uh, we have our own questions of just understanding of the application. Okay. And then we need to convey to them as a board with, and tell them that we have gathered other departments and ask them for comment and review. And here are those comments and review. We have gone out to third party engineers and we have given you comments and review. Although some of this has already happened and played out and that the comments have already, that the application and drawings have already been reviewed by third party, the third party has already given them back comments. We have to unroll it to the public so that they understand that there is a process here that you know this comes first, this comes second, and this comes third. And even though our third party engineers have already gotten back to them, we shouldn't just jump to see that they have updated drawings. If I was coming out of the blue and looking at this and all of a sudden there were updated drawings before there was a presentation and I didn't understand what was transpiring, I would kind of be upset. So even though time has delayed this and stuff has happened, I think we need to start and unroll it. And that's why I'd like to have the meeting to get started. Good. 
Sounds like a plan, Eric. So, so uh, just a question in general about the time frame on, I know we might have brought this up a month ago, but because of the delays, because of uh, no public gatherings and all that, that extends our timeline out. I know Eric's asked many times for a timeline and we still haven't seen one. Yeah, I mean, for the purposes of COVID-19, what the legislation does is when they eventually lift the legislation, we have an additional 45 days. Okay. And could you, uh, Eric, I, I may, I'm kind of speaking to a question you've asked before. Uh, I think that we'd like from our uh, council a uh, timeline for things. Am I correct? In what well, you've I, I think if they make the presentation, then, then council can speak up and say, okay, we've, re we've received your application and drawings. You've now made your presentation. The ZBA is now in process here. There was this COVID hiccup that happened, but from today, we are hopeful that if you can respond to questions in a timely manner, that this will play out under the normal X number of days of review and, okay. and make the case that if, if you drag out or have multiple issues or submit drawings in an untimely manner, that will necessarily be extended. And then there's this, and then the COVID thing. And I think Adam or, or Lisa or council has to make some statement to make that clear. And now we're all on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Have you spoken to Adam yet, Eric? No, I will. He hasn't called me and I haven't, I haven't called him, but I will, um, I have your email. So I will call him tomorrow and kind of relay that message. I was supposed to, to give you a ring, but. Yep. Okay. Okay, now, so, uh, anything else regarding? Uh, yeah, so Mario is our first alternate and voting member on this, right. correct? And John, you're 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 just like one of us, and you're asking all the questions, and you have every right to speak up. You're just not voting at the end, so don't hold back if you have a question or or feel like you've got something to say or you don't can't understand something that they haven't pre presented. Um, Unless, of course, somebody doesn't make the me subsequent meetings, then he would need to step up. Right. Correct. Okay. And so I'm saying you're an active participant in this, this whole discussion. Don't, don't hang back just because at the moment you're not voting. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, all the input we can get, the better off we are. Yeah. And for Mario and John's purposes, um, Elaine is not participating in this because she lives on Pearson Drive. Okay. Okay. And she's recused herself, so. Okay. Eric, are we all done then? Yeah, I, I will um, call Adam and just convey the schedule if that's okay, Howie, and that's what yep. I had intended to do is to try to um, have a discussion with him and, and try to have him be prepared so that he can present something. Okay. Very good. Anybody else? Anything before we close? Mario? No. No. no, thanks. Okay. Can we have a motion to close the meeting, please? Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Elaine, please vote. Yes. <laughs> Eric? Yes. Okay, I vote in favor of closing. Well, the meeting is closed. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.